coffee. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's an author's best friend. If you're not drinking coffee, well, good for you because it's addictive, but if you are, good for you because you got it right. You got the author's life. Alcohol is long gone. No one does that anymore. It's all about the coffee. It's also my favorite cup. This is either, there's no cats on this one. This is my, this one's my actual favorite cup. This one's in my, it's in my book, Computer Nerd. It's on the front cover. Yep. The cup that you see on the front cover of the Computer Nerd is one I'm holding in my hand. Unless it's the one that broke. I had actually two cups that looked like this, so the one that broke might have been that one. But it's one of them. Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the writer's bookshelf so today we're going to do another book on characters and as i've mentioned in the last couple of videos characters are very important to your development of your story and if you don't know how to develop a character then you're going to have really have our time making a story that anyone wants to read including yourself and so um, we really got to make sure that we understand our characters and we understand what motivates them and drives them and makes them interesting and so that's what our book today is about it's called the compass of character by um uh, david corbett and uh, what this does is this focuses on four directional forces that guide your characters. So what are those four, um, uh, uh, I can't speak, sorry. What are those four forces? Uh, it's going to be, uh, well, according to the back, human yearning, pathological maneuvers, backstory behavior, mechanics and growth and transformation, moral arguments. Um, it's actually the very actual points are uh, lack, yearning, resistance, and desire. And so when you think of the compass, you know, it's north, uh, east, southwest. These are the components of the character is, you know, for North you have the lack, then you have the yearning, the resistance, and the desire. And those four points, they all come together to show um, what the character's need is for the story. So kind of in a short synopsis view, the lack is what they don't have. The yearning is what they want. Um, based on that lack, the resistance is what stops them from getting it, and the desire is what drives them. Um, I think I got that right. But uh, this book, it's uh, it's a fairly lengthy one. It's almost 300 pages, but it goes into the depths of what makes that character work and how to really flesh them out. Um, so you have uh, moments like, um, should I want to do that one? Um, I'll just show you an example from a chapter here. The chapters are actually pretty long. That's the other thing. It's um, they have each chapter is broken up by several subparts. So you have like backstories, behavior, chapter five, and what they do is they give you a short overview, and then they'll go into the um, subheadings. So right here, exploring backstory for the characters' key seminal moments, and then you have the breakdown of what that is. So um, a few words of methodology, and then. Um, each section, you know, it, the length is, is variable, um, but it really digs into the components of those four uh, uh, points on the compass that define how the character is formed and how the, the character moves through the story. Because remember, the story is about getting your character from the lack to the desire and, I, and also deciding whether or not the desire gets to be met. Because remember, sometimes the answer is no, you can't have it because it'll you know make you worse. And so sometimes the character has to learn that too. And in fact, we all have to learn that. It's not just a character thing, it's a human thing. Um, but you have, um, when, you, when you look at the context, um, there's so many settings. I mean, most books have this, so it's not like an unusual, you know, unique thing, but they, um, it goes into the, the psychology of the character and the motivation that follows it and then it, it even it will address certain things like um, fear versus courage, and then down here you have guilt versus forgiveness. So you have like the, the dichotomies of uh, the character's uh, struggle. But um, as you go through each section here, you're going to eventually get to a summary, and well, you actually, I'm sorry, you'll have exercises. So you know what uh, reference book is complete without having uh, practices and exercises? 
um, you'll have that and then eventually you're gonna get to a chapter summary and the summary here yeah you have the summary of the main points uh, and then I think is that the last part of each chapter yeah yeah so each chapter ends with a summary and what's great about that I think that's a new trend in writers digest books in particular this one came out in 2019 so it's a fairly new book um, but uh, I think that's something that I've discovered that a lot of books love Larry Brooks's great stories don't worth themselves has this this book has it and I think there's another one I read for this season that's got it where they basically are going to give you a snapshot of the chapter itself uh, so that you can have a quick reference to what you learned and I think this book in particular needs it because now now for the criticism um, I'll admit that when I read this book I wasn't engaged by it and it's not because it's I think it's a bad book I actually think it's a very uh, well written book I think it might be a little too well written because it goes into the language that you really should probably you know it's the kind of language you read in college if you're at a good reputable college and the problem is when you're trying to learn uh, something as simple as character motivation you don't want to be burdened by highbrow language you don't want to be burdened by you know the fluffy way of getting to the topic and I know like for me in particular I just wanted to learn how to develop a motivation for my character and the barrier for me was that I just I didn't have the concentration to really you know dig in even though I know the book is trying to dig in that's sort of the point of it is it really does want to go into like you know all of the examples like it's literally this this particular book could probably be summarized in a in a single chapter or even a magazine article and you probably have all you need to know um, that's what's interesting about books like this is um, we talked about last week the um, creating characters book where you have all of the, the um, essays about character development and all the different components and uh, David Corbett actually wrote one of the articles in that that were that was featured in that book and the article was very easy to follow is on the level, it was you know well-written, enjoyable uh, essay. The book, this novel here, which is not this book, obviously came out. I think that was in 2014. This is 2019, so a much bigger difference in, in time between the two releases. But this one shows it happens when you have not just a point to make, but you try to fill it in with so many examples that um, even the redundancy becomes a little overbearing. So for me, my take on this is this is a good book to, to take in pieces. Um, if you try to burn through it or if you're, if you try to approach it when you're not in, in a sound mind or, or, a, um, or even in a, a focused mind, um, you may want to wait because you, know, you definitely need to be in a place where no one's going to bother you. You need to be in a place where you can uh, really take in the information, um, not be distracted by the language. Um, Eventually, the language you'll get used to it. There are certain sections in the book I found very easy to follow along, and the, and the language didn't change. It's just that my focus of the book, uh, I became a little stronger. And a lot of it is when you find a section that you can understand or identify uh, by the concept, then it becomes easier to follow. So um, my take on this book is I think it's going to depend on what type of reader you are, what type of uh, learner you are. Um, you may have an easy time reading this book from cover to cover, and I hope you do. Because I do think this is a book worth reading. It's obvious, I wouldn't feature it in the, in the channel if I didn't think it was worth reading. Um, and so it's worth the shot. It's worth giving it a chance. But, you know, you may, if you're like me, you know, if you're easily distracted, um, you may need to wait until you definitely can focus and you have nothing else of worry. I would even say for your writing, get your, your writing in a state where you're comfortable letting it sit for a minute or two where you're not obsessing over the thought of your, your work. Because if you're obsessing over anything, the, the language here I don't think is going to uh, burn through that. And that's where I find that books like this, I, I hope that they, the writers of these books will tone it down a little bit, make it a little more comfortable for any reader to pick up. Um, because again, it's not that we need to be impressed by the language um, or even the ideas, it's that we need to understand them. And if we have too much on our minds already, that's going to be very hard to do. And that's why I struggled here. So that said, that's why I appreciate the chapter summaries. Because the chapter summaries, they allow you to go back and review what you've covered. And they get to, um, they allow you to actually uh, tell whether or not what you've learned is what you learned. 
Um, and even if, if you find that you, nothing under, made sense, by having the summary, you can even go back and reread the section to see if it makes more sense once you see the snapshot view. So I do like the trend that Writer's Digest Books is taking now. I, I hope it's a trend. I hope it's not just for the 2019 books, but um, having the summaries at the end of the chapter, I just I do think makes it much easier not only to follow the book, but it, it prevents us from having to take notes because it's already going to, um, it takes the notes for us and it really helps us to keep organized. So that said, let me give you a quick overview of, of what's in here. Um, again, I'll use the chapter that I was just looking at if I can. Um, or I, I don't know, maybe we'll use prime mover, desire, not conflict, drive story. Um, it's gonna be a lot of conflict people who are gonna disagree with that, creating new conflict. Um, this is in the section on linking desire to yearning. Um, the whole thing's about desire here, although it's like halfway through the book and desire was in the... And there's a lot of exercises. Okay, summary of main points in this chapter. So this was um, chapter chapter 6, so the one that follows what we were just looking at. So I'm not going to read all of it. Um, I'm going to just show you this section here. I'm just going to read these bullet points in this part, just so you know what this has. Okay, so desire drives story is the, um, the headline. Okay, desire is created when something happens to disturb the status quo of the story world. That triggering occurrence typically takes one of two forms. An opportunity arises, so you can show the character what he wants and make him pursue it, or a misfortune occurs. Give the character what he wants and then take it away, or inflict on the character what he dreads and make him escape or defeat it. Desire, by putting the characters in motion in pursuit of some ob objective drive story. Conflict is desire meeting some form of opposition. Conflict is the central to the story solely because it creates tension, i.e., will the character get what, uh, what she wants or not. Okay, so like we were saying before, not the character doesn't always need to have his dreams fulfilled by the end of the story. Um, sometimes it's more interesting when they don't get it fulfilled. You know, if you had, um, uh, in, if you've seen Avengers Infinity War, uh, you'll know how that ended. You know, the heroes didn't get what they wanted. <laughs> And there was this, the story would not have continued uh, very well if, if they had gotten what they wanted. So sometimes you do need to let your character fail, especially if you're writing a series um, where you plan to have it roll into some other uh, conflict. But um, what's good about the book, again, is it, if you struggle with motivation like I do, and I don't mean like motivation to write, that's its own thing, but if you're struggling with character motivation, uh, not knowing who your character is or how to get them to a place where their story is interesting enough to want to read it. Um, I think it's worth looking at. Um, and it's another thing too, if you're a screenwriter, I didn't mention this, but this is something where the subheading is creating complex motivation for compelling characters in fiction, film, and TV. So it's sort of marketed not just to novel writers, but also to screenwriters and television writers. So if you do fit any story type, and I would even say video game writers, if you're writing video games, you can still learn something from this because again, uh, when you're writing story fiction or story driven fiction it's the motivation that the character has it, it tells the, the reader what this is about if your characters have no motivation it's hard to sell that to your reader and so um, when I talk about like my epic superhero story my character the tennis player who's you know on the run you know he's going to an island where they make superheroes but the problem is he doesn't want to become a superhero and one of my struggles as a writer, as someone who struggles with motivation, is like, why would he want to become a superhero? Well, first of all, the whole series works on him becoming one. And so if he doesn't want to become one, how does the story even work? And so that's one of the struggles I had to reconcile for the longest time, is how do I get it so that, as a reluctant hero, he can become a willing hero? And, um, you know, it's an interesting thing to, to go through, but, but having the stages of, of developing your character by the compass, you know, by the lack, the yearning, the uh, resistance and the um, desire, by putting it all together, um, you can figure out what that motivation is, and you can figure out why he's motivated to not be a superhero. Why Why does he need to be a, just a tennis star? Is his ego that strong that he must be in the spotlight You know, with his own name? Actually, yeah, he's a narcissist. That's kind of the reason, is he likes his life. He's used to it. I mean, he's not that well-respected among his fans, because um, you know he's he's kind of a um, he, well it's an interesting backstory but he he's not 
a fan favorite by uh, people who watch tennis, but he's definitely a celebrity, and you know they go, all the go, things that go with that. But he's comfortable with his life, and for anything that makes a change, especially something where he becomes a nobody in, in action to a superhero, that's like a huge leap that he has to. It's it's a, a huge undertaking for him not only to get there but to become good at it and if he's not good at it why does he want to do it so it's been uh, an interesting uh development trying to decide how to make him stand out as a strong character as a motivated character um when you know you know that your fiction has to work because of his motivation so these are some of the interesting things that we deal with when we're writing characters so um yeah i just I, it's an interesting thing to consider um, I do think it's a good book. Again, it's hard to read if you're not focused. Uh, so you definitely get yourself in the state of mind where you can follow along. And then just be prepared for a lot of um, fluff. It's, um, it's, a, it's a long book that probably could have been a lot shorter. But uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to say that it has to be shorter. Because again, the, the chapters, they do cover um, examples that I think really flesh out the reasoning behind the compass points. So it's hard to walk away and not at least you know understanding what needs to be done for your character and so ultimately i think it's worth getting through the almost 300 pages of, of highbrow literature just to make sure you understand how it works so um that's uh, again compass of character by david corbett um worth owning eventually um it's i would say in the realm of developing character this one should probably be a later book um just for its intensity of development uh definitely needs to follow creating characters um whether it needs to follow the other two that i'm gonna be doing next i don't know yet um i, I may if you guys saw i just recently published my season one recap if you have liked the season one recap and you want me to do something like that for season two let me know and i'll figure out where this one fits into the um into the buy order but I, I definitely wouldn't call it first. But, you know, while you're developing characters, you should probably look at it at some point. Um, so, you know, there you go. Um, but that's all for today. Thanks again for watching. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, do all the things YouTubers tell you to do. Um, make sure you come back next week for our follow-up to... Uh, we're going to do another character book. We've got a couple more dedicated character books and then some um, resources that I'll, I'll be covering in the weeks after that that will be really useful to you. Um... But do you remember that your character is what makes the story worth reading? So if you don't have your character well developed, um, you need to figure out how to do that. And so this book and the one we did last week and the weeks before and the ones we're going to do, I think will really help you uh, get your character game down pat and then help you to understand not only what makes them a strong character, but really helps you understand yourself. Because ultimately, isn't that why we write? You know, it's not just to entertain our people, even though we are we're definitely writing to entertain but also kind of understand humanity, understand what makes a character a character, and understand, um, you know, it gives us our own way of, of exploring ideas and figuring out if, if what we're, you know, if, if the things we want to share are worth sharing and, and all of that. But, um, but anyway, yeah, come on back next week. We'll have another one, um, and then uh, we'll go from there. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.